Am I the asshole for asking my husband to not eat lunch at night? We're a one-income family. We have a 10-year-old baby who's under a year old. I don't can't work due to health chronic pain issues. My husband works full-time usually 35-40 hours a week. When I cook dinner, I make enough so my husband has leftovers to take to work the next day. He has the habit of eating what's supposed to be his lunch as a large nighttime snack before bed. We have plenty of stuff he can snack on or heat up that's not his lunch for the next day. Then he ends up eating out instead and he hates fast food so he spends $20 $25 on lunch each day he eats his lunch as a snack. This adds up and makes money tighter for us. I guess it's his income but it's affecting the entire family. I've asked him to not eat his lunch as a snack but he says he loves my cooking and can't help it and I should feel complimented he enjoys it so much. I do appreciate he likes what I cook so much, but I also like knowing our bills will all be paid and we can afford gas, groceries, household supplies, and stuff for the kids without being in the red each week. Am I the asshole? Edit if I make more for dinner he will have third fourth helpings. I do the grocery shopping and try to get everything I can on his snack list, he will still eat his lunch as a snack. Hubby is a recovering gambling addict and currently owes $100,000 in back taxes that I'm trying to also budget to pay towards each month. He currently works in retail making around $40,000 a year. He has a master's in economics and used to make $200,000 but some bad decisions in life messed that up and he ended up in legal trouble and can no longer work in his former industry. Wow are you really buried the day here with the fact that this man owes $100,000 in back taxes and had a previous gambling addiction. There is absolutely zero reason he should be eating out with that much debt owed. Jesus in a Prius. Also he should learn some self-control. All these suggestions of portioning out two meals. Just no. This grown ass man needs to learn to restrain his impulsivity and leave his homemade lunch alone. Not the asshole. Not the asshole but rephrase it from don't eat lunch at night to stop buying lunch at restaurants. How he makes that happen is up to him. We're a one income family with my wife being home with the kids I either take leftovers or I eat PBJS because the amount of dollar wasted on takeout lunch daily is absolutely absurd. Talking hundreds a month. I don't need to eat sandwiches or leftovers, but I recognize that it would be unfair for the fam and wife if I was spending hundreds on restaurants to myself. This has nothing to do with larger dinners. The husband just wants to eat out. That's his thing. He has no intention of taking a packed lunch. Not the asshole. Having been in this position, the only thing that worked was sitting my husband down and actually showing him the numbers. Say he's eating out 3x's a week, that's $60, $75 dollars per week, or $240, $300 per month, $2,880, $3,600 per year as a family vacation. That's he's eating that's a full month's or more end mortgage simply because he won't save dinner leftovers for lunch and stop eating out. Lay out the actual cost of his snacking and give him a reality shock. It might help put things in perspective for him. Good luck. Oh, op, you buried the lade on this one. You're sweating the 2000 3000 he spends on lunches in a year, when you gloss over the heavy debt, his gambling and the job loss due to bad decisions like maybe embezzlement. The problem isn't simply his eating habits or poor planning. He's a complete and total train wreck, and you have decided to stick with him. It won't get better. I'd run like the wind. Not the asshole, but please get therapy and a good divorce lawyer. Not the asshole. Your husband is being irresponsible. And it's both of your money because you are caring for the children and household for both of you just as he is caring for the income for all of you. Come up with a solution together. Either make more food when you cook and portion out two lunches worth for the fridge, or if he just enjoys eating out plan for the whole family to enjoy going out much less often than his every day, or learning not to eat huge amounts at night before bed, or something else. 
edit and maybe you should take over management of the finances and set a budget? You've got three kids not the asshole. Info what does this guy buy for $20.25 if he doesn't like fast food? Like he goes and gets a sit down meal at a restaurant? So he's spending $450-ish month on food for one meal for one person in a family of four. An average grocery budget for a family of four is around $800 a month. He is spending more than half your family's monthly food budget for one meal a day for himself. Not the asshole, but he certainly is. Sounds like he has a financial crimes record and can't support his family enough to eat. You're propping up this loser and he can't control himself enough to not overeat before bed. Not the asshole. He likes eating out. That's the problem. He doesn't want to fix it. I'd take this to couples counseling. He's shooting a hole in your budget and shrugging because it doesn't bother him. That's not okay. Not the asshole. You're being responsible while he's being self-indulgent. Not the asshole. Ask him to keep an accurate tally for one week of how much he spends eating lunches out. I'd bet he'd be surprised. Then tell him to multiply that amount by four. That's approximately what he's spending in a month. Then show him what your monthly bills expenses come to and ask him which of those you should not pay so that he can continue buying lunches. Not the asshole. I suspect from the edit that husband is barred from the investment industry. He's used to pushing boundaries and ignoring people who know better than him telling him no. Add in the tax bill and I'm wondering how you're still together. Not the asshole in any way. Every paycheck buy a gift card so you know you'll have enough for diapers and formula, and give him cash that he can use for lunches. You get $50 a week for lunch. Make it last or starve, woman shrugging. Also, bulk up your meals with cheaper ingredients, if possible. Lots of produce, rice, pasta. I am so sorry you're dealing with all of that. Your husband sounds like a child. He is clueless about your budget and what you're trying to do and like any boy, he doesn't really care because he gets to continue with his behavior. Nobody stops him. Stop cooking extra and fix him a sandwich in the morning he can take to work. Hard not the asshole and you're not his mother. Based on the additional info about past gambling, I'd be concerned that it wasn't really $25 a day on lunch. I know it's read his way but you should speak to an attorney or financial advisor about how to best protect yourself and your son from could be a precarious financial situation. Save everything. Document everything. Also, him saying you should be flattering is manipulative and asinine. He should be flattered you're still there when he gets home. Not the asshole. He can eat leftovers at night if he must, but then he needs to figure out lunch for the next day that is from home so he's not wasting money that y'all don't have. Is he bad with money and general planning in other ways? Jeez Louise. Start making super frugal meals and if he complains, tell him that's all that's in the budget due to his eating out. Think cheap hot dogs, sloppy joe, hamburger helper etc. Not the asshole way to bury the Lede with that edit. He is burying the family with a debt. There are so many red flags here. He's not a good partner. Not the asshole quit making extra for his lunch. You know what is going to happen. Make a bucket of PB and jelly sandwiches for snacks and lunches. Or let him eat cereal for a snack. Not the asshole, but the crux of this is not about eating leftovers, it is about actively choosing to eat out for lunch multiple days a week instead of bringing something from home out regularly is not an effective budget option for most people, with one income, and two kids, no way. Not the asshole. But it doesn't sound like your husband is a reliable partner or a person with any impulse control whatsoever. Not the asshole. What the heck is he eating that's that expensive every day? Not the asshole. It's not just his paycheck. Since your arrangement doesn't allow you to earn an income his income is the family income, and you are trying to stretch it as best you can. He needs to listen to you. Am I the asshole? 
for telling my sister to change her dress, wear underwear or she is not welcome to my wedding? Link to show a similar dress. Not the asshole she feels that I'm being unfair since I have no right to control what people wear. Actually you do have a right, when it's your wedding so. Oh for crying out loud. Dress codes exist everywhere in life, and yes the host of an event can set the dress code. Does she not have to work for a living? Not the asshole. Edit to add not only can the host set a dress code, but a bridesmaid is required to wear the dress that the bride selects. Not the asshole. Sister's dress sounds inappropriate or at minimum stylistically clashing for the occasion. Especially for someone in the party. I don't think OP is being unreasonable here, but sister and parents sure are. My wedding will be in February 2023. Not the asshole because I don't want to piss off a time traveler. Not the asshole. That dress is totally inappropriate for your wedding. This is also incredibly attention seeking, and she's not the main character at your wedding. She should choose something else. Not the asshole. Just boot the drama princess from the bridal party now. She would be the type to show you a conservative dress, then waltz up the aisle in her underwear. And this is just one reason why people elope. Op, put your foot down that your sister will not be dressing like she is going to MTV Music Awards show or she will not be in your wedding. Because you are the damn bride, and in this case you can control what your bridal party and even guests wear. Even if your parents aren't talking to you, or don't even attend, you can still get married. And your sister can be disinvited if she doesn't behave. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. It's your wedding it's about you not your attention seeking sister. Not the asshole. While she is absolutely allowed to dress however she wants, you are absolutely allowed to say who comes to your wedding. Hey OP do you have a picture reference for the sort of dress it is? It sounds inappropriate for a wedding but would be good to see a visual. Not the asshole. She feels that I'm being unfair since I have no right to control what people wear. You don't. However, she has no right to control who your bridesmaids are or who goes to your wedding. You decide those things. Not the asshole. Part of being an adult is adhering to dress codes when you go to places. Weddings have dress codes, your sister can adhere to the dress code or she can stay home. Not the asshole. If it was at a wedding in my family, people wouldn't be offended. They'd just laugh at how desperate she seems. Sounds like she wants to upstage you on your big day. Her dress would end up being the talking point on your wedding. Totally not acceptable you're not the asshole. Not the asshole there is dress codes at wedding. Unspoken dress code. Like don't wear white and don't dress like the main fucking character. Not the asshole and it's a shame you can't get a do-over for how you described the problem with her dress. Appropriate for wedding is different than appropriate for cocktail party is more likely to be heard than indecent dress. You are not the asshole, this is your wedding and you should be how about you buy a dress you want your sister to wear if you do not like her choice? That is, of course if there is a need of a compromise. Otherwise, it is your wedding, you should anyway be free to invite people or not. Even when it is you sister, or mother, or anybody else. You still can get married without them. You are required attendee at your wedding, the rest are optional. The fact that your parents are willing to not appeak to you over a scrap of fabric is telling. Don't feed the drama, just be calm and state the ultimatum you did previously every time it comes up, again. I am the bride, so yes, I do have primary say over what my party will be wearing to the event. We have a mixed crowd of attendees, and your outfit is inappropriate in that capacity. I want us to be well represented as a family and to make a good impression. That's it. And maybe show her some alternatives, winking face, smiley face. This is why the bride chooses the maid's dresses. Not the asshole. Sounds like your sis is being a bit precious. Not the asshole you actually do get to tell people what to wear for your wedding. Oh look, 
A near identical am I the asshole? To yesterday. This time the sister is older than OP at 28, rather than last time's 18. The obsession with describing the sister's side boob is identical though. Not the asshole. The wedding day is a special day more so for the bride only. Isn't it frowned up to upstage or draw attention from the bride? Not the asshole. It's a matter of common sense and decency. You don't go to a wedding half naked, period. Not the asshole. Either she dresses appropriately and is respectful, or she cannot go. Simple. What in the actual fuck is wrong with these women? It's not enough to show your tits to everyone, but you have to show them you aren't wearing undies as well? Attention seeking much. As for the parents, they're acting like children. As if they don't see an issue here. Is she the favorite? Not the asshole is the day about you and your husband or her? I wouldn't let her come even if she changed her dress. She clearly has no respect for your wedding. You don't have a right to tell what adults wear, unless it's at your wedding then you have every right to put in a reasonable dress code. She can't dress appropriately then don't come. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, Emo the bridegroom have every right to kinda decide what PPA can wear on their wedding and especially about their bridesmaids grooms men. If the sister wants to advertise herself she can do that somewhere else then on her sister's wedding. Also it's up to the bridegroom who can or can't come to their wedding. It seems like your sister prioritizes herself over you. She's your sister, she should realize how big of a deal a wedding day is, and dress accordingly. Dressing how you want you can do in your own time, and it's not an a-hole move of you to ask her to dress more appropriately. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. You have been very flexible by allowing your bridesmaids to choose the style, but it stands to reason that the bride would not want her attendants to look like street walkers. You have the ultimate say. It sounds like your sister comes by her lack of good sense honestly. Natar. You shouldn't have given away as much power by just letting the bridesmaids choose. Jealousy and attention seeking rears its ugly head as older sister wants to steal some spotlight with a skimpy dress at your wedding. Not the asshole while people are allowed to dress as they please, there is a limit to things as well. Not the asshole. If she were a wedding guest perhaps, but as one of your bridesmaids it's customary not to be flashier than the bride herself and this is most definitely going to be a major distraction. Hate to tell you but you've missed your own wedding. Not the asshole. It's your wedding, not hers. If she wants to dress like that and not respect your wishes, then she absolutely should not be in the wedding party. A wedding is the one place you can control what the bridal party wear. Did. Solange write this? Not the asshole, it's your wedding guess what? You absolutely can tell her what to wear if it was a different event then you've got no chance of dictating what she can wear. Not the asshole. Where did she even get such a dress? Seriously doubt it was somewhere marketed in the bridesmaid dress direction. Not the asshole. You screwed up by not being more specific I guess, or in assuming that your sister would have a modicum of decency or deference. You don't mention, but I am 99 sure your sister is not married. Your wedding is making her feel like an old maid and she is determined to advertise for the open position. Not the asshole. It's your wedding. You can dictate pretty much anything. Not the asshole. I'm usually very let people wear what they're comfortable in. Especially dealing with purity culture PTSD. But it's also really important to dress appropriately for the occasion. I have a good idea of the style of dress because I wear very similar going out with my cousin to gay bars. And I'm intentionally looking sexy skanky and hoping to attract a pretty lesbian. For my brother's wedding I checked with his wife to make sure she was okay with the floor length selkie dress I liked because it was important that while it fit the color, she was okay with it. Not the asshole. This dress sounds like a dress for an after party if you have one. Not for the wedding itself. Am I the asshole? 
for telling my friend's GF to stop this shit when she pulled out tarot cards. I put a TLDR right at the bottom. My best friend Lewis has a girlfriend who is super weird, not just in the way she acts but her whole personality too. She believes in tarot cards, palmistry, crystal energy and all that sort of crazy stuff. He started to bring her to group meetups she seemed like a relatively chill person, she was just chatting and smoking some pot and stuff. One time when I was at Lewis house though she started to ask me what my zodiac sign is telling me what crystals match my energy. There was another time when one of our other friends was going through a breakup, and she just straight up said to him I guess that's what happens when a Virgo dates Aries. It's just my personal opinion that anyone who believes in this stuff probably has a screw loose up there. But I didn't say anything cause that's his girlfriend. She started to talk about this shit more and more. I invited Lewis round to my house one day and when he arrived his GF was there too. I wasn't rude or anything, but also wasn't super friendly to her because I didn't even invite her. For a while we were watching a movie, until she pulled out a pack of those tarot cards. She started telling me that she wanted to give me a reading, I said no thanks. But she started pushing saying that she just wants to see what my reading comes out as. I think the fact that this was in my house and that I hadn't even invited her made me fly off the handle, and I ended up saying loud, but not shouting at all, I have a reading for you stop with this shit and get real. She asked if I was being serious and Lewis thought I was joking. I kept a straight face and said I wasn't, and that I was fed up with all this psycho shit. His GF started crying calling me names and Lewis said why are you being such a dick before leaving. A few other friends that know us all have literally agreed with me, saying that she tries to push that shit on anyone and they're fed up too. But some others say that I should have just let her do it to get it over and done with. Am I the asshole? TLDR my best friend's GF believes in crazy spirituality shit. When she tried to give me a tarot card reading, I said no but she kept pushing. I finally told her I have a reading for you stop this shit and get real. They got upset, but some of my friends don't blame me. Am I the asshole? Edit because I forgot to mention and someone's comment made me remember I don't know if this is true or not but Lewis has said to us once that his GF has some kind of personality disorder but wouldn't specify what. I'd kiff that's part of the reason for her behavior. Info have you told your friend how you've felt before this happened? From your own admission, you don't have any respect for her beliefs hence the screw loose, so I'm curious if you've ever been as outspoken to your friend as you have been here. I won't assume, but if he felt comfortable enough to bring her over, could he have been under the impression that you liked her being around? I guess she doesn't know the meaning of a polite no, so, what other way to make her understand is to not be polite. Not the asshole. ESH super weird. Probably has a screw loose. Wasn't super friendly to her because I didn't even invite her. This psycho shit. So she is an R because she is pushy and lacks respect for boundaries. You're an R because of the above quotes but mainly three. She was invited by Lewis. Be angry and unfriendly but it should be to Lewis not the person who has zero idea they weren't welcome. Point the anger where is belongs for that, which is Lewis. Info. Not just in the way she acts but her whole personality too. What is the distinction between the way someone acts and their whole personality? Not the asshole in general, your spirituality and beliefs should be kept to yourself or amongst those with similar beliefs. Imagine if she was a Scientologist and kept whipping out those personality tests during group hangouts, she would obviously be T.A. It's the same thing. If a Mormon refused to leave your doorstep after you said no, you would be in your right to curse, swear, and insult them. Her pushing you to participate in her spiritual beliefs against your will deserved the same treatment. SH, the only thing that was an issue was her insisting on giving you a reading at the end. The other examples before that are just her speaking about her interests. You have excessive negative judgment about it and it sounds like you were just waiting to say something to her. 
Esh she's pushy and she needs to learn boundaries. You sound really intolerant and overly reactive to things that are outside of your comfort zone. Next time try and enforce your boundaries without unnecessarily insulting people. Look, personally I find all that stuff nonsense. But if she believes in it, and gets enjoyment or some sense of control of her life from it, let her be. She should be able to read a room, and not be so damn pushy about it, but you shouldn't have flown off the handle, but instead just be firm with her. E.S.H. Not the asshole. I would call this nonsense out the very moment she started doing anything. Am I the asshole? 
for refusing to stop kissing my own baby? My husband M25 and I F25 have a six-week-old daughter. She's our first baby and the first grandchild in both of our families. We were advised by our pediatrician to not allow anyone besides ourselves to kiss our baby for the first take 12 weeks minimum. This has been communicated to both of our families who have been respectful of this as well as our other boundaries rules despite a little bit of grumbling about it from his side. Last weekend we were over at my in-law's house and I had just finished breastfeeding my daughter, so she was all sleepy. I kissed her forehead before settling her to nap on my chest. My mill noticed and immediately remarked on it in a super passive aggressive manner Oh, I'm so glad that we're able to kiss baby now did your pediatrician update the rules? I was super confused and asked her what she meant and that the pediatrician's recommendation hadn't changed. She then accused me of violating the rules by kissing my own baby. I told her that the recommendation was that no one besides myself and my husband kiss our daughter, and she argued and heavily implied that I was being dishonest because I'd previously said nobody can kiss the baby rather than nobody but husband and I can kiss the baby. She went on and on about this until I snapped that it should have been obvious that the rules we told her regarding our baby were about what we would wouldn't allow other people people to do. She called me a hypocrite so I got up and shut myself in the guest room while my daughter continued to nap on me. A little while later Mill came in and apologized, claiming it was a knee-jerk reaction and she was just confused and upset. She said she understands now that the rule only applies to other people. She then asked me if I would avoid kissing my baby in front of her until she's allowed to do so as well, because it's upsetting to see me doing that and knowing that she can't. I told her I can understand that it's frustrating to have strong urge to kiss a baby and not be able to. But I am personally not going to stop kissing my own baby for the sake of her feelings. Mill is calling me disrespectful and a hypocrite and has gotten Sill on board with this as well. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. What's next, is she going to ask you to stop breastfeeding in front of her since she doesn't get to do it too? She needs to back off. Not the asshole you don't have a baby kissing problem, you have a mother-in-law problem. Not the asshole if you like, I'd be happy to politely tell your mill to go to hell. In all honesty, your spouse needs to deal with this. The rule should always always be your parent, your problem excepting those handful of situations where the in-laws like the spouse more than their own kid. Solution don't go near either of them with the baby and then they won't have to see a damn thing. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. This is a perfect opportunity for some malicious compliance, though. If she doesn't want to see you kiss your baby because it's so hard, you guys should stop visiting her entirely until the baby is older. You're just respecting her wishes Macron Macron. This is absurd. You need to just limit contact with these nut jobs until your baby has had her immunizations. Your husband needs to step up here and deal with his relatives. Incidentally, when you kiss your baby, you pick up bacteria and viruses on her skin. Your body, with its mature immune system, creates antibodies which are delivered to her at her next feeding. Not the asshole. Definitely not the asshole. What is with this obsession that people have for kissing other people's babies, especially that young? Bugs the hell out of me. Natar, you are better than me. I would have told her if it was a such a problem then you will see you once she able to kiss the baby. Not the asshole. If the rule upsets her that much she can stay away until she is allowed to kiss the baby. Not the asshole. Seriously, your mill is nuts. Not the asshole what's next, is she gonna ask you to stop breastfeeding the baby because she can't breastfeed the baby? Tell her she's being absurd and if she wants to keep seeing her grandchild, she needs to do some growing up herself. Not the asshole. She sounds incredibly possessive already. Just watch out for if this kind of behavior increases. My partner's sibling just recently had to cut their mom off from seeing their baby because she repeatedly wouldn't respect them and would wake him up throughout the day and come inside the house without asking. Nadar. News flash. 
There are tons of things that you get to do as mom that she doesn't get to do as grandma. If she can't get in board with that her involvement in baby's life isn't mandatory. Not the asshole you are literally following medical advice, and also giving your baby the necessary skin contact that infants need. If your mill can't take this, your husband should be mediating the interactions, not you, and you should consider going LC with her. Not the asshole and unless you live with Mill Sill, I'd avoid visiting them having them visit you until the 8-12 weeks is up, because you're only going to hear more on the issue, and with a new baby, you don't need the added stress. Congrats on the little one, op. Not the asshole. The reason the pediatrician asked this is that adults can very easily pass herpes from cold sores to babies and their immune systems aren't strong enough. An acquaintance of mine's baby died because a relative kissed her baby with a not yet visible sore. Not the asshole. Mill is entitled. It's 100 okay for you to shut down anyone trying to stomp your boundaries. No questions and shitty requests allowed there are no conditions required in order to appease the peanut gallery. I do not understand people's desire to slobber all over helpless, tiny humans with low immunity. Why do they make a huge deal of it? Yes, they are cute. They have little immunity. Stop, you selfish freak. Keep that booger lip, herpes sore, flu, or ligma away. In laws are common offenders. Just say no. Not the asshole. The entitlement runs strong in this woman. Imagine trying to control your affection for your own child. She is going to be a problem and you'll need to make rules and enforce them with her. Good luck and make sure your husband has your back. Not the asshole, what an unhinged lunatic. Wow. Why can't people accept that the doctor's advice regarding a newborn may change from generation to generation? It's not a dig at previous advice a new mom and dad but especially mom is so fragile about trying to do everything exactly right that she simply doesn't need this stress. If the grandparents think she is going overboard, why can't they just smile to themselves and remember how they were at first also? Not the asshole. The mill is being very unfair. Why is your mill acting like she never experienced being a mother? That's your child, you breastfeed her and you have the mother and child bond that's good for the well-being. Your mill is basically an outsider, she could have picked diseases from outside of your home that's the main reason why no one should be allowed to kiss someone's baby. Natar it's your baby. You know, I actually do think you should stop kissing your baby in front of Mill. She shouldn't have to see that. In fact, she shouldn't see you at all for the next two six weeks. Minimum. Good for you setting boundaries now. Definitely not the asshole. Not the asshole you. A husband staying out of it or diffusing it himself is what he should be doing. Mill mother-in-law. Moms are mostly crazy. We just are used to our own moms so that crazy we don't notice. Every other mother you'll never understand. Edit. Makes more sense. I don't understand why you would kiss someone else's baby. Hug sure. Hold sure. But kiss seems kinda weird. Not the asshole, she came out of my body, rolling eyes face, rolling eyes face. Not the asshole she will have to handle or not see the baby in the first few months. Not the asshole. Where is your husband in all of this? Not the asshole. I can't believe you have to explain this to a grown woman obviously the parents of the child, that live with, breastfeed care for, the baby are not included in the no kissing. I think the mill should try to be more understanding, especially if you are literally following doctor's orders. Not the asshole. Your mill acts very immature and entitled. Why is it even a problem for her? She should think about baby's health first. There is no point of other people kissing your baby. Not the asshole, op. What a weird hill for her to die on, although I'm not at all surprised. Am I the asshole? For not including my ex-wife's stepkids in activities I do with my kids. My ex-wife and I divorced about four years ago after twelve years of marriage. We have two kids together ten eight. 
We live about 30 minutes apart and have split custody but the kids live with me primarily during the school year because I live in a much better school district. The kids spend three weekends a month with their mom during this time. My ex and I co-parent pretty well in my opinion and usually get along fine. My ex remarried a little over a year after our divorce and has three-year-old twins with her new husband. She also now has two stepkids 13-11 as well. So when my kids are visiting their mom, there are six kids in the house. My kids hate it because they never truly feel like they are at home there because their mom's attention is divided so much between all the kids, especially their young half-siblings. They tell me that they never do any activities when they are there, they pretty much always just stick around the house because it's so much work for my ex and her husband to handle that many kids. So, I make it a point to do something fun the one weekend a month I have my kids at home. Camping, sporting events, museums, zoos, fairs, festivals, etc. My kids and I really look forward to planning and doing these things together. My ex has started asking me if it would be possible to include her stepkids in some of these activities because they are getting jealous of all the fun things my kids are doing. This turned into an argument recently because I told her to stop asking because I her stepkids are not my kids and I have zero desire to build any kind of relationship with them. I told her that the only thing stopping her and her husband from doing fun things with the kids is themselves. She told me it's a lot of work with six kids and I wouldn't understand. I told her it was her choice to marry a man with kids and to have more kids herself and that isn't my problem. She told me it would be fun bonding experiences for our kids and the stepkids and it would mean a lot to her if I would help her out with that. I told her that making her life easier is no longer something I am required to do and if she and her husband can't handle all the kids at the same time, then I am more than willing to revisit our custody agreement so I can have our kids more often if that would make her life easier. That pissed her off and she called me an asshole for being petty about this. I ended up telling my kids that they should try to refrain from telling their mom and step-siblings too much about the activities we do together. They didn't really understand why because we've always told them that they can tell us anything, but I explained it to them the best I could. I do feel bad about that part because I want them to know they can be honest with both their parents, but that seems to be the easiest way to keep the step-kids from getting jealous. What is it with all these people expecting their ex-partners to help parent their current partner's children? Not the asshole. Shut that shit down. You give an inch and she'll take a mile. The demands will never stop. Pretty soon you'll end up with all six kids. Not the asshole your ex is incredibly entitled. You aren't a free babysitting service. You didn't volunteer to be a big brother. If her stepkids are jealous, then it's her and her partner's job to manage their expectations. Instead she's weaponizing their jealousy to make you feel guilty. That's highly inappropriate. I agree with you and think you might want to consider rearranging the custody agreement, since she has acknowledged that six children in the home at once is too overwhelming for her. She told me it would be fun bonding experiences for our kids.
Am I the asshole? For telling my wife to not wake me up at night. Wife woke me up in the middle of last night 3 a.m. telling me she's having menstrual pain and can't sleep. I woke up and told me her to take an Advil. I even googled if it's okay to take one not after a meal. After she's takes the Advil, she's back in bed and I massage her around the belly in my half asleep state. We both fall asleep. This has happened in the past too. I'm a light sleeper and will wake up easily. I also have trouble concentrating at work the next day if I don't sleep well. Next day when we are having a normal conversation about the previous night, I told her in a nice way for practical reasons keep the Advil and some water next to her side of the bed and that she need not wake me up for this with respect to the previous night. She got really upset saying I'm blaming her for ruining my sleep, started arguing if I would have the same attitude when we have a baby. Again, maybe my delivery was bad and my opinion was solely with regard to the particular situation from last night, but I really feel she shouldn't get so upset, especially after I've always been there to help on previous occasions like this in the middle of the night. I don't wake her up when my back pain flares up. Edit she did wake me up by tapping me. She usually never takes pain meds which is why I googled in the night out of concern whether it's okay to take them without food. Am I the asshole? She said you're blaming her for ruining your sleep, when in fact she did ruin your sleep. Info when you say your wife woke you did your wife literally wake you up, purposefully, intentionally, shaking you a stir, saying up I have menstrual pain and can't sleep fix it for me? Or did you? a light sleeper, awakened due to her restlessness and ask what was up and she explained, so you helped out to the best of your ability? This makes all the difference. If the former, not the asshole, but if the latter, nah. If she does this regularly, it may be time for her to seek other help for pain insomnia. Not the asshole. I had hellacious endometriosis and excruciating pain and never considered sharing helpful for anyone. Waking you up for cramps is not cool. Now if you were to do that with a baby, different story. Not the asshole. I get that it's nice to have someone to vent to, but you also have to know when you're overstepping. No vote counts without you explaining her waking you up. Did she actively wake you? Or did you wake up because she was restless? Without that crucial info the voting is not possible. You not answering anything makes it hard to believe you didn't paint this post in a way to make you shine. As a pharmacist, I just wanted to comment on the Advil part of your post. It actually should be taken on a full stomach, so at 3 a.m. without eating something, Advil might not be the best choice. Tylenol is much safer in that context and hopefully it works for her. Otherwise please have with a decent snack. Not the asshole. As the owner of a uterus that gives me absolute grief when it comes to my periods, I keep pain relief on my nightstand all the time and a bottle of water. When my period pain really flares up, I get up and grab a heat pack. Do I wake up my boyfriend because I'm sore? No, I take care of it myself like I have been doing for 14 years. Just because I wake up doesn't mean my partner has to be up too. Not sure how old you guys are but as an adult I would never wake my husband up if I was having menstrual pain, which I have every month, because I don't know what to do. It seems odd that she doesn't know how to manage this on her own. You're not the asshole, it was rude to wake you up when she could have just got the meds took them and gone back to bed. I have no verdict, but I sometimes wake my husband up to comfort me, since I get sleep paralysis and nightmares. I'm 30. He has never complained. Not the asshole. There was no reason for her to wake you none. You weren't causing her pain and there is literally nothing you could do about it. Why? Also, she did in fact ruin your sleep, so she should just admit it and apologize. If she woke you up because your imaginary baby needed something that would be a situation where you could actually do something, so it's not comparable. Not only that, but as a grown woman she has been through this many, many times. By now, she knows exactly what to do or take to feel better. She should have just handled it and left you alone.
Not the asshole she didn't even try to solve this problem on her own before waking you. She can get a glass of water and a dose of Advil on her own which by the way if cramps are turning your stomach, it's best to take with crackers or apple sauce, NSAIDs can cause stomach upset. She should at least try to take care of herself before waking you. Not the asshole she needs to grow the F up. Sorry, and that she actually compared not being happy waking up to partner having cramps telling that adult to take a pain kill. To waking up to care for a child? Is she for real? She is acting like a toddler and being completely ridiculous. If she is serious, she should not have a kid. I can have such bad cramps that I can barely stand up just twist and turn in bed from pain. So bad, painkillers often can be like taking candy. I would never ever do what she did, unless I would think something have gone wrong and I might need to go to a doctor or need help calling a nurse for help to talk to. If she deliberately woke you to tell you then not the asshole. If you're just a light sleeper and woke up anyway then you're the asshole go help her for God's sake. Does she suffer from endometriosis? I know that can be extremely painful. But she should also respect your sleep schedule. I take pain meds and try not to bother my husband, unless I am in excruciating pain and I have to wake him up, which he doesn't mind. I'd c her bringing up the future pregnancy is really weird and she sounds very dramatic for someone that doesn't respect you. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Our bodies change over time and even though she may have never taken medication in the past, she may need to now. Virtually every woman I know has a period kit a heating pad, pain medication, etc. by their bed for situations just like your wife had. Everyone in the house doesn't need to wake up because your wife is having cramps. Having occasional pain during a monthly period is nothing like having a baby. Your wife is a drama queen and needs to take care of herself. Not the asshole. Menstrual cramps are a way of life for most women. She did disturb your sleep. She is the selfish R. Next time you have the slightest pain or cramp in the middle of the night, I'd wake her ass up and she how she likes having her sleep disturbed. Honestly not the asshole cuz WTF a man gonna do about your pain. I've stayed in a boy's bathroom for hours crying myself cuz it was so bad I have endo and he was mad I didn't wake him up but FRWTF he gonna do about it. Not the asshole. Why in the hell people are speculating that you're a light sleeper who got woken up by her being restless when your post literally says she woke me in the middle of the night to tell me about menstrual cramps I don't know. I have a period it sucks, I am not waking up my family to tell them when all they can do is give me painkillers and a heating pad. As a woman, not the asshole. Her cramps, her problem. Your solution for her to keep pain meds and water next to her side of the bed is a completely rational one. My guess is that she's trying to be the center of attention so you'll feel sorry for her or something. She needs to grow up already. Women are usually taught by their mothers how to take care of these issues right out of the gate, so she should have been a pro by 1314. Not the asshole. I'm blaming her for ruining my sleep. As you should. She woke you up to tell you she has menstrual cramps. Yikes. She's an adult, handle it like an adult. She's being petulant. Sleep is sacred. Not the asshole. Unless your wife is 12, she should know how to deal with cramps on her own. No need to drag anyone else into it. If she is 12, then you would obviously be the asshole. I just don't understand why she woke you up to. I've only be woken up by my kids whn they day and he feel good. Not the asshole. People are missing the point. He's not saying for her to never wake her up again because of the pain. He's saying to just leave some Advil and water on her nightstand because that's a pretty trivial thing that saves both of them time and effort. It's a whole lot easier to just roll over, open the bottle yourself, and take a pill, than it is to wake up your partner, wait for them as they go to the bathroom or wherever and get the medicine and water, and then you take it. Am I the asshole? For going to a gym my partner got banned from? My M24 partner used to work at and regularly use a gym. 
my partner had some issues with another co-worker at the gym, the truth behind these issues is a bit convoluted, but it resulted in the other worker feeling bullied. Because of this, my partner was fired. We continued to use the facilities a few times a week, but my partner started badmouthing the co-worker while at the gym, and rumors started the spread, the validity of which is not clear. My partner ended up getting banned from the gym. Understandably, we were upset at this, and she lost some friends because she didn't regularly see them there anymore. I love working out at this gym, it helps me de-stress, and the people there are great. I didn't want to stop going, and haven't. However, my partner wants me to stop going, and says by going I'm hurting her and not supporting her as a partner. Her family agrees with her, and they all are pressuring me to stop going. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. But seriously, why are you with someone who is so toxic she got fired for causing drama, then banned from her gym for stirring up more drama, and then proceeded to stir up even more drama with her family because you wouldn't buy into her drama? She was a bad employee, so she was fired. She was a bad gym member, so she was fired. She is being a bad girlfriend, so. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. She is a bully. She's got her family bullying you, too. Questions she lost friends because she didn't see them anymore at the gym. Why didn't any of these friends call her to see if she was okay, or to hang out? And when you say the truth behind these issues is a bit convoluted, and the validity of which is not clear, does that mean nobody can prove that what my partner said was untrue? Or do you mean my partner isn't giving me all the info? so I cannot validate whether she's in the right or the wrong? Why are you with this person, job got rid of her for cause. The gym got rid of her for cause. Unlikely things were as convoluted as your partner told you. The fact that she was fired and then continued running her mouth is highly indicative that she was every bit the bully she was accused of being. Then there's the fact that she, a grown-ass adult, expects you to give up something you really enjoy because of the consequences of her bad behavior. To top it off she, again a grown-ass woman, went tattling to her family to get them to gang up against you to try to force you to do what she wants. Not the asshole but wake up and see her for the asshole she truly is and stop making excuses for her bullshit. Not the asshole. Let me check I've got all the facts. She bullied her co-worker until she was fired then continued to bully her former co-worker whenever she was at her former place of employment you till she was banned. Now she is bullying you to leave because she isn't allowed to go there? Maybe some of those friends just have better perception than you? Info what were the specific issues between your partner and the co-worker? Why did they feel bullied? Why was your partner fired? My partner started badmouthing the co-worker at the gym. That certainly doesn't lead me to believe your partner was falsely accused or fired unfairly. Not the asshole. Usually I'd say you should have your partner's back but it seems like she earned a ban, there is no reason you need to stop going as well. Now if you guys like working out together and this is obviously making that impossible, you should consider finding a new gym, where you're both welcome. You need to reevaluate your relationship with this person. Not because she wants you to quit the gym, because what had happened at gym and work. To me sounds alarming. Info are there similarly priced or less gyms within a similar distance of this one? Info your partner has some serious personality flaws. I.e. she's clearly an asshole to other people. Why exactly are you with her? Not the asshole. But you need to ask yourself if your partner is in fact a bully and do you want to be with someone who openly badmouths other people. Is your partner a nice person? No. She's responsible for her behavior. Whatever went down, her subsequent behavior was are ah, interesting that she's been accused of bullying her behavior are ah, classic bully. You should not pay the price because she is an R. Ah. You don't need to support your partner when your partner is blatantly being an asshole. Do you really need this petty drama bullshit in your life? She's even dragged her family into it. Come on, man. Not the asshole, but
but your girlfriend is sugarcoating this story. Not the asshole. Your partner sounds like an immature mean girl. She's dramatic and just not a very good human in general. Why are you with her even? She can't be that hot. Sounds like it's the gym, or her. I'm not even being flippant. Which one do you like more? I'm curious. Why are you staying with a bully? LOL. No, not the asshole. Your partner Fafo. You're lucky you didn't get painted with the same broad brush. A good gym is so hard to find and your partner is just jealous. You have bigger issues than what gym you go to, bud. Just tell her that her own actions led to her no longer being allowed at the gym, and you're going to continue to go. If she gets banned from a restaurant, a store, or other places are you going to stop going there too? Not the asshole. She got banned. You didn't. She's essentially trying to punish you for her behavior. She needs to grow up and accept the consequences of her actions here. Not the asshole keep the gym, get a new girlfriend. Your partner sounds obnoxious and has issues. Not the asshole but why are you with them? Major red flags here. That your partner wants you to share in the punishment of their bad behavior is some childish high school nonsense. Not the asshole. Have you considered firing her? Normally I'd say you're the asshole, but this situation smells off to me. It seems like this is all your partner's fault. If she's bullying her co-worker and spreading rumors, she absolutely deserved to get banned. In which case, not the asshole. Not the asshole. As a former trainer and someone who hates gyms you can be both lol. You train where you're most comfortable, or training becomes an inconvenience, or something that doesn't make you feel as good as it could. As long as you don't continue to buy into the drama, and you maintain better manners and etiquette than your partner apparently has, keep going. That all said, mud sticks, and I would guess she's not just like that at the gym. Is she someone you want to be continually associated with in negative regard? ETA. Look, that's way too vague of a story to post here and expect a decent answer. Either your GF is a mega B word that was rightfully expelled from a gym, or your GF got screwed over by workplace politics and drama. If it's the first, why are you even still with her? If it's the second, why wouldn't you want to support her? Either way, you all seem to kind of be assholes in this scenario. Way too much drama. Not the asshole. Your partner made a choice that had consequences. You don't have control over her behavior, she does. Her consequences should not be included to you because you're in a relationship. I do foresee her having an issue with you continuing to use the gym. Are you upset that she was banned or the behavior that led to her being banned? That's one question you should consider. If it's because she was banned maybe find another gym to go to together, if it was her behavior, it's time to evaluate what you want from this relationship and what you will tolerate. I used to be with someone like this, first this co-worker, then the next one. Some random on the luck man. Not the asshole. Man, she must be a really good lay with a killer body because she sounds like a total asshole. You're not the asshole, though. Wow, I get loyalty but she seems to be the problem here. Sending in her flying monkeys too? Dude, she's the problem. Not the asshole, tell her to learn from this instead. Not the asshole. She's really burnt her bridges and is expecting you to stick by her. But normal interactions don't end with someone getting bullied and your girls getting banned. Why are you with her again? Um, it takes a lot to get banned from a gym. Sounds like she and her family are bullies. Run. <laughs> Not the asshole really but I get where she is coming from. If you think she behaved badly and deserved her banishment, then definitely not the asshole. And you should talk to her about it because it's ringing alarm bells for me. If you think she was unfairly treated, you might consider leaving the gym as a show of support. Nataha behavior got her kicked out, that has nothing to do with you. Am I the asshole? For telling my brother I think he did the wrong thing forcing his bio son to move in with him? 
Almost six months ago my brother learned that he had a 15-year-old son with his ex. She died but had put my brother's name on the birth certificate and so my brother was contacted. He never knew she'd had a child let alone his child. A DNA test was carried out and confirmed my brother was the biological father. It was a very emotionally taxing time because my brother carried a lot of anger knowing his ex, who he had parted on good terms with, never told him. The only reason he can think of for why is she had always wanted to move back to her hometown in another state and did not want to be forced to stay or share custody with a long-distance parenting plan, and so never told my brother as a result. The social worker in charge of the case mentioned the maternal grandparents wanted to retain custody of his son and that his son wanted to remain there, but as the biological father he had the right to take custody. My brother was called by the maternal grandparents and they, along with his son, asked for my brother to say no to custody. But he wanted his kid and forced him away from the family he knew so he could live with my brother, Sil and their kids 11, 9, 7 and 5. Things are not going well. My nephew is angry that he was taken from his family. He doesn't want to know my brother. He does not want a relationship with Sil or the kids. He's angry and is refusing to engage in the therapy my brother put him in. He ran away twice. He has had lots of trouble in school, which is not surprising really. It's been rough. He talks to me some. He told me as far as he is concerned they can all rot in hell and if he's hurting their poor little feelings then it's too bad so sad and they better get used to it because once he can, he's going home and won't speak to any of them again and fuck blood because blood means fucking nothing. It's worth noting that his maternal family are not blood. His mom and her sister were adopted and he is aware of this and does not have much of an interest in blood ties generally. My brother and Sil are frustrated that things are not starting to show signs of improvement. My brother mentioned that the kids have been upset by the rejection and wanted to know why he was so mean to everyone and didn't give them a chance to be a family. I said nothing to him and just heard him out but he said I had a look on my face and asked me about it and then I told him he should never have made his son move in. I told him he went against what his son wanted and now he was living with the consequences. I said whether he likes it or not, his son doesn't give a shit that he's his bio father. He cares that when he was grieving the worst loss a kid can imagine, he was torn from the people he loved to live with strangers. My brother said he did the right thing and he could love them too if he would give them a chance. But he's being stubborn and refusing and I am not helping things by saying he's wrong and his son is right. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Your brother has his head in the sand. His son has a family, a support system that he was uprooted from to be forced to live with strangers that he was expected to play happy families with, somewhere he doesn't know and hates because of this. Not the asshole. But your brother is. He ripped away his son from his friends, from his family he loves and is expecting that everything will be sorted out with time. Maybe he can save this relationship with his son when he is letting him go to his home he took him away. But if he does not, as soon the son is turning 18, I bet that will be the last time he saw his son. A relationship needs time to grow and he need to understand that what he did was cruel to his son. That was not love that was ownership. Not the asshole you are right. Your brother could have still taken the time to get to know his son without ripping him away from the only family he's ever known while grieving his mother. He's being selfish. He can still let him go back but with visitation to get to know him. I understand he wants to know his son and step up but he's meant to do what's best for the son not himself. Not the asshole your brother isn't listening to or understanding his son. The boy has lost his mom, his home, his school and friends, and his grandparents in a matter of weeks. He's now living with strangers who have no connection to his former life and refuse to empathize with how unhappy he is with the situation. Dad and step are frustrated and angry, kids are upset, and they don't understand why the magic wand of therapy isn't making him happy. This is all about their feelings and how the boy should adapt to fit in. As soon as the kids hits 18, he'll be gone. And they will be to blame for the anger and resentment that kid will carry.
Would you brother consider a shared time with the grandparents might make things a bit better for all sides. Any relationship has to happen organically, you can't just shoehorn a person into an established family against their will and expect it to work out when DNA is the only thing you have in common. Also, I find your brother to be not only insensitive but extremely arrogant that he expects this boy to be happy that he wants him just because he donated the sperm that created him. His bio mom shares some blame as well, she had a hand in creating this situation. That poor kid, please share this post with your brother, maybe it will open his eyes. My father chose not to be in my life so I promised myself if I ever had child I would be in their life. I would be incredibly angry if I was denied that chance but I would never rip a child from their life they know. Not the asshole. That poor kid. He's going to run away again. Your brother is a fool who is living in a fantasy. Yes, he didn't know his son existed, but that doesn't mean his son wants anything to do with him, and he doesn't. Op said the child is 15. If your family is in the US, then after he turns 16, he could make a case to go back to his maternal family. It's what he wants and he'll be considered old enough by then. Otherwise, your nephew will continue to raise hell until he's 18. Let your nephew know you'll continue to support him. Good luck. Natar, the truth hurts. Not the asshole. I think your brother is in a terrible situation tbh and I do feel bad for him because it sounds to me like he's trying to make up for lost time and be the father he wasn't allowed to be. But that's not something he can force and if he keeps pushing he's just gonna drive his son away. Not the asshole your brother is focusing on what's best for him and not his son. I suspect the kid is waiting until he turns 18 so he can leave for good. Not the asshole, it's a good thing your nephew has you in his corner what does the rest of the family say about this? Not the asshole. Your brother was crazy to think that a 15 year would come around after expressing his want to stay with the grandparents and the life he had built there. It was actually pretty selfish of your brother not to take the kid's feelings into account and go against his wishes. I would understand if he was a toddler but not when he's 15. Not the asshole maybe if your brother hadn't forced his son to move in with them his son might have been willing to have a relationship with him. Not the asshole. Might be why the ex never told him about his son. He is so focused on his rights that he isn't doing what is right. The dead mom is the R for denying your brother a chance to know his son from day one and vice versa. That time can never be gotten back. It's just a sad situation all around. The kid is right. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. I think what your brother means is I focused on my own wants and needs, I'm hoping I can just bulldozer over my son's wants and needs and you're not helping by telling the truth. Not the asshole. Your brother is being unbelievably cruel it almost sounds like he's subconsciously doing this to hurt his ex who is dead. Is there any way your nephew can speak to a social worker to find out if he has any say at all in who has custody? I cannot believe that a court would agree to rip him away from the only family he's ever known, in a stable, loving home, to live with total strangers where he's miserable just because of DNA. Not the asshole. Brother chose poorly and perhaps selfishly. Maybe even to spite a deceased ex. Whatever the reasoning was, he did not do it for the benefit of the child which makes him an R. In the UK you can't add a father to the birth certificate without their knowledge. Is this really a thing where you are? Isn't that a little frightening that anybody could just add your name? Doesn't the state go after them for any child support? If he wants a relationship with his son, it needs to start slow. It may never recover at this point. Not the asshole. Might ask the brother how he intends to enforce that love. The kid is only there because the legal system is enforcing it. Brother is describing Stockholm Syndrome, not love. Am I the asshole? For telling my mother she didn't have to come wedding dress shopping with me? I 30 female am engaged to my fiancé 37 male. We're both close to our families. His mother had three boys and never had a daughter. 
When my fiancé's brother was getting married she was not involved in any part of the wedding planning. She never complained or said anything but also would have enjoyed it. I'm going to pick out my dress this weekend. I was really excited about it and was talking to her about it while we were at my in-law's home on Saturday. I then told her it would mean a lot to me if she came with me. She got teary-eyed and agreed to come. I was so excited to share this moment with my family and the woman who means the most to my fiancé. I was talking to my mother on Sunday and we were talking about the excitement of going to pick out my dress this weekend. I mentioned in bringing her my mom, my grandmother, my sister, my godmothers, my stepmother, and my mother-in-law. My mom asked why I was bringing my mother-in-law and I explained I wanted her to enjoy the moment with us and start all making memories together since we'll be family. My mom said she didn't want her to come since she feels like she'll take away from a moment between her and I. I assured her that wouldn't happen. We argued about it back and forth and this is where I might be the R. I said if something that petty is going to ruin your day or my day then you don't have to go. Then she said well who's going to help you get it on and have those moments with you and I said any other female figure in my life who's going will do just fine. She got upset and I regretted saying it. I did try apologizing but she's not responding. So am I the asshole? Update. My mother decided to let me know she will not be coming dress shopping since I'm taking the moment away with her only daughter. I let her know that was okay and I respected her decision. She then called my dad her ex-husband of 20 years to let him know what his daughter was doing. I happened to be at his house but she didn't know that. My dad very sarcastically responded with oh no our daughter is getting married and she loves her mother-in-law and wants to extend an invitation to something she'll otherwise never get to experience. How dare we raise her to be a good human. How awful and you should ground our 30-year-old who hasn't lived at home in 12 years. Do you know how silly you sound? Pretty sure that made her more angry. But it made me laugh. I decided to switch the boutiques so that she cannot show up the day of and cause any unnecessary drama. Luckily my mother-in-law doesn't know any of this is happening and my mother has no way to contact her. Natar, I brought my mill to cause she only has sons. Not the asshole. Shopping for wedding dresses is already stressful, you should be able to choose who it would be with you. And also, your mother is making the moment that is supposed to be completely about you about her, is your moment, not hers. Not the asshole I will never understand why people are so greedy with love. As a mom, I'd be thrilled if my daughter had even more people to love her and dote on her. Not the asshole. I'm surprised your mom has a problem with your mother-in-law coming and not your stepmother. Then she said well who's going to help you get it on and have those moments with you and I said any other female figure in my life who's going will do just fine. She got upset and I regretted saying it. She got upset because you used her own logic against her to win the argument. She had no counter to that and knew it. Not the asshole, it's your choice who is there. You are the bride. I think it's very sweet extending the invite to your future mill and your mother was being selfish. Tell her you're sorry for the harsh words and that you do in fact want her there but it's your dress shopping and if she's going to bring anything but happy vibes then you'd before she doesn't go. Not the asshole you are allowed to have whoever you want with you when you are wedding dress shopping. If you wanted to invite the crazy cat lady who lives down the hall from you, invite her. Your mother is turning something that is about you into something about her. Not the asshole. These people who think of love as a zero-sum game baffle me. I only have sons. I was thrilled when my future Dill asked me to the dress fitting. Thrilled. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, your mom is. Gatekeeping joy and happiness is the behavior of a seriously insecure person. Mom needs to figure out why she feels this way. In my experience, it's the sales clerks who help the prospective bride put dresses on and off. Salons don't want random people doing that job as they could damage dirty the sample dresses, 
and the sales clerks use special clips to size the sample to the bride to show how the final product would likely fit. There's no way your mother would be doing anything other than being a member of the audience cheering squad. Not the asshole. Your mother is getting jealous that you have another mother type figure in your life with your future mill, as opposed to realizing that it's so much better for you and your marriage if you have a good relationship with your future mill. Not the asshole, you mom knows she won't be able to help you try on dresses right? She'll just be sitting back with your other guests while you get help from a bridal associate. Not the asshole your mother has some serious selfishness going on. You did a lively thing by inviting your future mother-in-law. Don't let the selfishness ruin your day. Uninviting her would be cruel and for your mother to suggest it is ugly. Stand your ground. It is the moral high ground. Pretty sure the dress shop people help you because the dresses are so expensive and they don't want them to be handled a lot. I could be wrong. I'm worried your mom has a vision of what this experience should be and isn't going to be okay if it's different. A moment between her and I, when she's bringing six six other women besides future mill. Not the asshole. Dad take a bow and slam that microphone at your ex-wife's feet dad went gangster on her. Not the asshole. It is so lovely of you to include your mill. I included my mill and it only made the moment more special. She didn't overstep or try to take anything from the other women present. When I found my wedding dress and veil, my mill was the third person I hugged and we both had tears in our eyes. It was special and years later I'm glad I included her. Not the asshole I did the same thing. My mill who only had boys and who had never had this opportunity despite all sons being married, my mom, my grandmother, my sister and my best friend all went together. And everyone had fun. There's not a finite amount of joy in life, you don't run out. Share that stuff around. Not the asshole my nan helped me find my dress. It's a memory I treasure. My mum wasn't there at all. While I do wonder if my mum felt a little off about it because it's such a unique experience I don't think she would have complained about sharing the experience. And we had a brilliant time together with everyone for the bridesmaids dresses and flowers and the decorations and table favors there will be plenty of other things you could do with just her. Not the asshole. Something is fishy about your mom's reasoning. It's going to be you and from my count, at least five other people. I don't understand how one more will ruin or take away from the experience. Not the asshole. Stop letting your mother shade you with guilt. She is being overly selfish. Why isn't she made about any of the other women attending? Because someone in the family would get upset about it. She is making your mill a target for no reason. However, she can milk this incident for family support. Does she usually need to be the center of attention? Not the asshole, it is your wedding dress shopping appointment you choose who you want to invite, and you chose for your moment. I stand behind your decision. Not the asshole. Your mother is being selfish and unreasonable. Not the asshole. The more women to support and love you, the better. And as a mom of all boys, I hope my future deal is as considerate as you are. It would mean much to me to be included. Not the asshole, why was your mom getting so weird about this? No you're absolutely right, if your mom is going to be that petty and narcissistic over including the mill, then she shouldn't go and you can have another woman who actually supports you help. Also is she aware mill will probably be at the wedding too? Does she expect you to cut mill out of that too so it doesn't ruin your moment? Not the asshole. When I told my mother that I was inviting my mill, my mother thought it was sweet. Not the asshole at all. I'm actually going dress shopping with my mill this week and my mom isn't able to come. Your mom should be focused on the experience and not worried about her insecurities. I hope she's able to get over her feelings, best wishes for finding your dress. Enjoy the day. Am I the asshole? For planning on getting married before my twin sister? I've seen a few posts related to similar wedding situations but none with twins so wanted to ask. 
My fiancé recently surprised me with a proposal on a trip in Iceland Sept 2023. I said yes and we excitedly started discussing wedding visions. It's important to mention my twin messaged me a seemingly random date for August 2024 while I was on vacation. When I questioned it she simply said my wedding this exchange of messages took place before my fiancé proposed to me. After our trip, we attended a dinner at my parents' house with family, my twin, and her fiancé in attendance. She got engaged Sept 2022. Over dinner everyone was curious on when we were planning on getting married so we honestly answered maybe July 2024 I will also say before our response together, I jokingly said August 1st 2024 and everyone laughed including her fiancé. I did explain it was a joke afterwards just to make sure everyone knew I wasn't serious. My fiancé actually picked the time of year himself. When he explained all his reasonings I agreed we could look for dates in July. Later that week I had a call with my twin and she brought up the joke date asking if I was serious. I explained no it was a joke. She asked if we were serious about July to which I told her yes. She told me my fiancé and I were being disrespectful and she expected an apology from him for choosing that time of year because we knew she already had a set date in August I explained we did not pick that time of year with any intentions of hurting her feelings or being malicious or evil. She did not care. The phone call ended after she explained she could not put into words correctly how she felt and she would contact me later. She never reached out so I waited until the next day to call and talk to her. I asked if she'd had time to figure out the right words so I could understand how she felt. She told me she didn't need to explain anything because she'd already told me she felt disrespected. The call then devolved to her basically screaming and yelling at me. She requested that I not talk to her about wedding related things until I have a set date and venue with a deposit put down. The basic message I got from her is she does not want me to get married before her even if it's only by a month. Other than that it is very hard to get her to clearly communicate exactly how she feels or what she means by what she has said. There are other conversations that took place between the dinner and the last phone call with her but I feel I have included the most important information. One of my fiancé's reasons for that time of year are specific to a family member's health. I did not tell my sister this as I did not feel it was my place. Since then my fiancé has had a discussion with her fiancé and disclosed that information. Edit the family member has terminal cancer. Edit my entire family knew my fiancé was going to propose on the trip. Two weddings within 30 days is a big old burden for family and will be hard for everyone to attend both. I guess that your twin is upset. It is kind of a poor manners move to scheduling your wedding 30 days before her already schedule wedding. I get the extenuating circumstances but it's just not polite or respectful. You're the asshole, but not a super big one. Using a family member's health as the reason seems silly when you're waiting seven months anyway. Are they ill? Like, how is seven months a hurry? I know weddings can take time but those are usually blowout weddings. If this family member is really important to your husband why wait so long, am I missing something? Really not sure if you're the R but seems weird to put it so close to her date. And honestly it would be nice for your family members to be able spread out the dates and costs of it all. Even June would be better, may best. Edit 9 month, wait not 7. Even worse. Info where will these weddings be taking place? Will family members need to travel to them? If your sister genuinely doesn't want you getting married at any time before her, and if you're both going to get married in a place where nobody important needs to travel to the wedding, I'd say NTA. But if she's just upset because you're creating a situation where people will have to choose which wedding to attend because they're less than a month apart, then you're the asshole. She picked her date and told it to you before you even got engaged. You're the asshole. You knew she was getting married in August. Well, to be fair, she gave you a date for her wedding and you come back to announce that your wedding will be one month before hers. It feels very much intentional, even if you say it is not. X200B
I am not calling you an asshole but I see where she is coming from, from the outside it really looks like you have rushed to be the first one married as soon as she had a date. If it's so urgent to get married for a relative's health and the standard venues are booked, have a smaller wedding on a weekday less popular in March, and a blowout one year anniversary celebration the following year. Then the relative goes to the earlier wedding, and your celebration party doesn't upstage your sister. And you get married earlier, which is supposedly your objective. No, that doesn't work. Why not? Because you don't want to upstage your sister? Right. You're the asshole. But personally, I would feel weird about having a wedding so close to my sibling. And if they had announced first, I would definitely think most people would think I had ulterior motives. There's 12 months in the year, and you had to choose the month right before? If there are health issues involved, why not have it even sooner? Or are the health issues going to get better? Then have the wedding a few months later. Some people really love the whole wedding thing. Why steal their thunder? I wouldn't want to be the one who can't let my sister have her own season. You're the asshole. You knew it would be bad enough to say the 1st of August as a joke so don't act ignorant. 2024 is a leap year so there will be 366 days, and you just had to pick a date just before your sister's already set wedding? You're the asshole. You're the asshole. I am a sister and I do not need your sister to explain to me why she is upset. Why do you? She is not saying you can't get married before her. She is saying that picking a date a month before hers makes you in a hole and she is right. Ask yourself this question if September were the month your partner preferred, would you be happy w following her wedding? Though honestly even that would still be jerk move. Why do you feel the need to overshadow your sister's good thing? I'm sorry but you're the asshole. My brother got engaged five months before me. I set a six month minimum from the day of his wedding. People deserve their own time in the sun. You're the asshole you called your sister's date random but your fiancé had reasonings. How do you know her date was random? Do you think you're the main character? But, uh, but more importantly than a bunch of internet strangers' opinions, I promise you that the people in your life family friends think you've done this maliciously and that you're being petty. Is that how you want the people you care about to view you as some pathetic attention seeker? She gave you a date for her wedding, so you've come back with one a month before and you seriously don't see what's wrong with that? Yes you're the asshole, it was underhand and mean. If he is concerned about a family member with terminal cancer, the sooner, the better. Waiting ten months or so may be too late. Having two family weddings so close together may be a strain on friends and family who want to the weddings are fair-sized. People coming from out of town, people who have to have child care, the cost of gifts, and so on could be too much. You're the asshole. Your fiancé is also an R. As soon as you got home you were joking about getting married on August 1st, then July. That was before you even searched for venues. Your sister can see through your lies. You're being malicious and I hope it bites you and your man in the ass. Edit to add and type oh your fiancé gave you his reasons for July and you agreed that he can look for dates then. You didn't try for earlier then couldn't find openings, blah blah. You're embellishing the truth. Talking in circles to justify your horrible behavior. You're the asshole. Yeah, this is your twin sister. You're the asshole here. You're the asshole. She's been engaged longer and planning longer, and you picked the month before hers. Maybe you weren't trying to be a dick, but that's definitely a dick move. You're the asshole. You're trying to steal her thunder. Terminal cancer? I'd be planning a wedding ASAP, not waiting nine months. Am I the asshole? For telling my mom that my wife is pregnant? A few days ago my wife and I found out that she's pregnant. We had been trying for about a year after she had experienced a miscarriage of a pregnancy that we hadn't planned. We are both obviously super happy and excited to become parents. 
So yesterday I went out to lunch with my mom and I told her the news, to which she was thrilled for my wife and I. I didn't think anything of it until when I told my wife that I told my mom and she was immediately upset with me. She said that she wasn't ready for people to know given how her last pregnancy ended. She said that now because my mom knows that she is pregnant, she's now going to know if something goes wrong, and she's not comfortable with that. When I asked her why that is such a big deal all she could say was it just is and that I wouldn't understand. In my defense, it's not just her news to share, it's ours and I feel like it was completely reasonable to tell my mom as she is an immediate family member who I am very close with, I also know for a fact she already told her sister so I just don't see how me telling my mom is a problem. She also never communicated to me that she wanted me to keep the news to myself. A day later and she's still very much so mad at me, I am getting the silent treatment and she avoids me like I am the one who did something bad. Again, I really don't think I did anything wrong here. While I understand that it's her body I think it's unfair that she can tell her support system but I'm not allowed to tell mine. Am I the asshole? Edit after typing this all out and coming back and reading it again I realized that I sound like a dick and apologized to her. She accepted my apology, and we made up and got sushi. Thank you Reddit for helping me realize I was in the wrong lol. Another Reddit since this I've noticed a trend. My wife did not have raw fish sushi, she had a California roll with imitation crab, which is perfectly fine from everything we read x200b Utter you went out by yourself to tell your mom. That's a together announcement. Kinda soft you're the asshole because it is a period of uncertainty for your wife given what has occurred previously. Most couples wait three to four months before announcing for this very reason. I realize you are excited but consider that your mum will blab to everyone and if something goes wrong those everyones will keep asking your wife about the baby. It will be shit for her. You're the asshole especially when you have experienced miscarriages before, telling others of a pregnancy immediately after testing is incredibly difficult and sensitive. Your wife is already probably extremely anxious and feeling enough pressure from herself to carry this child safely and not feel like a failure and heartbroken if something happened. Most doctors etc generally advise waiting a certain period before telling others because the early weeks are very volatile. Regardless though, you and your wife should talk about when telling others is okay. It is news that belongs to both of you. You're the asshole there's usually a safe timeline to begin telling people. She's already experienced a loss with her miscarriage. She's on edge with good reason. Her sister is her support system to the things happening to her body, your mother is not. It's great telling folks that you're pregnant, it's grim having to tell them that you aren't anymore, your wife had already done that once so she knows only too well. Lots of pregnancies fail, most of the time there is nothing the mother could have done, or not done, to improve the chances of a good outcome, but that doesn't stop people making judgments. You're the asshole. You don't tell anyone until you both feel confident. You're the asshole just because she is pregnant with your sperm doesn't give you the right to tell people she is pregnant. You are not pregnant and therefore it is not your pregnancy to announce. I would recommend couples counseling because I think you have deeply betrayed her trust, and I can't tell if you are truly as dense as you are coming across here, or if you just have no empathy for your wife's feelings. You're the asshole just in general it's customary to wait a certain amount of time before telling people. Did she announce to her sister or was she seeking her sister for counsel and support? There's a difference. How did your mother react with the first miscarriage? At her, pregnancy announcements should be a mutual decision. I wouldn't want people knowing this early either. This wasn't just your news to share, it was hers too. You're the asshole. you should have talked to your wife first. I see your perspective and you should be allowed to talk with someone but clear it with your wife first. Did you consider your mom might be the last person she wants you to tell? Info who has to break the news and deal with the fallout if she miscarried again? 
Are you aware how common it is to not tell people until after the first trimester due to risk of miscarriage? You're the asshole, it's both of your news and you decided to share it without a discussion first or taking your wife's opinions or emotions in consideration. You're the asshole. Because only she knows how it feels to have to tell someone her body failed to bring a baby to term. You experience the miscarriage very differently. And there's still a huge stigma in women having them. By telling your mom without your wife's consent you added to the list of people that if something goes wrong she'll have to go through that again too. Major you're the asshole she's pregnant, not you. You are there to support her. You're the asshole you should have discussed this with your wife before telling anyone. Gentle you're the asshole. While I can appreciate the excitement you have for becoming a father it was inconsiderate of your wife's feelings. You say that she could have communicated that she wanted you to keep quiet about the news, but you also could have communicated that you were going to tell your mom. Regardless of how you feel, her feelings matter more here because it's her body. Show her some compassion and empathy. You're the arsehole it's not our news to share. It's hers. She is the one who went through the miscarriage. Not you. You were on the sidelines when it happened. The same way you are on the sidelines while she is pregnant. She is the one who will be going through all the challenges and changes of pregnancy not you. My husband knew with each of our pregnancies to keep his mouth shut until I was ready to announce it. As he put it he isn't the one who has to give Thea body for over a year to have a child. You're the asshole. It's not just her news to share. But apparently, it's yours alone. I guess get used to making decisions on your own as you'll end up that way if you keep acting like a single person, with no regard to the woman who is carrying your child. Pregnancy sucks, by the way. It's time to grow up and learn how to care for someone and put their needs above your own for a while. Consider it a practice run. While you didn't mean to be, you're the asshole. Dude, your wife suffered a miscarriage. Think about what that did to her emotionally her body failed her, the life she was growing was lost. It's devastating and the emotional toll just doesn't go away speaking from experience. Most people wait until like the second trimester to say anything because usually if something is going to go wrong, it's in the first trimester. Usually. Not the asshole. She told her sister and let OP know she told her sister. If she didn't want OP to have a single support or confidant, she should have mentioned that at the same time. At which point he could have said, whoa, hypocrite, you are going to have to explain your reasoning here. Many women know the 12 week rule for divulging pregnancy news. I wouldn't assume my guy knows that. And I wouldn't assume he understands that I get to break the rule but he doesn't. No one is the R. You don't have a crystal ball so you didn't know how she would feel about something common to do tell parents about pregnancy. SH, for the simple reason, your wife doesn't communicate. First, she didn't communicate that she didn't want people to know. Second, justice isn't fucking communication and hell will be just a sauna before my husband speaks to me that way. It's no different than a parent telling their child because I said so. Third, silent treatment? Gently, you're the asshole. You shouldn't have shared the news with anyone before discussing it with your wife first. If you just found out a few days ago, I'm guessing it's very early in the pregnancy, and your wife is probably feeling extremely vulnerable, anxious, and fearful of having another miscarriage. It makes sense that she might want to confide in one other person she's close to like her sister, but wouldn't necessarily want her mother-in-law to know. You're right that it's both of your news, but that means that both of you should agree on the timing and manner of making it public. You're the asshole. This was news about both of you, not only you. She is the pregnant one. You should have talk about it first. It's a two yeses or one no.